the exact heat cause in the wee hours of the morning just before I awaken to begin my day, just as his day is coming to an end. He is in the kitchen drinking Paps Blue Ribbon and talking to my voicemail. Needless to say, I turned my ringtone off on my mobile phone the evening before I laid my brain down, as Zaktik calls that the sleeping thing, in anticipation of the voicemails he will leave. Because most nights he wouldn't call once, just once, to leave his messages or stories or tales, depending on what you would call them, three at a time, because he does things in increments of three, like leaving, leaving three messages, drinking three beers, or maybe eating three french fries at a time while sharing their fries communally the way cavemen did, he would say. And uh, so on and so forth. I have become such a fan of these stories that exotic leaves for me that I have begun a practice of stockpiling his voicemail tales on my mobile and divvy them out to myself at certain times throughout the week, week as rewards to myself for completing one of life's little hurdles here and there. I wake up feeling sluggish, listen to an exotique tale. Like some may, may make themselves a cup of coffee in the morning, I had the exotique one to welcome my day. So I may find myself in a long line at the deli counter. I can listen to an exotique voicemail tale, learn some cautionary tales from the exotique one to push the line along. Happy to sad, from being glad to being had, from serious to hilarious, back to delirious, from being informative to inspirational, or maybe a message ripe with slurred, mispronounced, and or repeated phrases. It don't matter to me. I want it all. I need it all. Words or sounds, the lost and the founds, any and or all the above, in a tight, well-fitting glove. I look forward to each one the way some may look forward to a weekly sitcom. Exotique has important things to say. Not even he would believe that his humble stories could possibly mean so much to anyone, especially a guy like me, because utmost exotique is humble. He revels in his humility, which is another thing I admire that, about exotique. But he, his messages and stories, and tales of reasoning with madness, Blue Sugar Box Fans, Finnegan the Dog, Randy the Thai Kickboxer, Longview, the phenomenon of cigarette smoke invading his eyes, Sugar Panties, Shadow boxing in the kitchen window, the double yellow line, the hitchhiking story, when he met Dog the Bounty Hunter, <laughs> up the hill, down the hill, the uphill struggle, the hill across the way, the big turtle, paddling his boat up the Dum Dum River, the invisible party, the Texas cafe, the possum bush, suspected replicas, the recycle bin, all these were his tales, his shared wisdom, his way of giving me even more when, it, when he appears to society that he has nothing left to give. The exotic one gives me more before the sun rises each day than most people give me in a fucking lifetime. I admire exotic in many, many ways. First and forever most, mine friend, exotic one, thank you, wherever you are right now. You are the best of the best and king of the best. The third Templar, slayer of the beast, the ambassador to madness, and the one who should set the fucking standards instead of the fucks who do. So tonight, as I get the car off the road and lay the, lay the brain down, I will wonder if in the morning when I check my mobile, if I will have a new shared experience of his existence to sustain, to sustain my belief in humanity one more day. Yeah. Don't be